In one of the previous lessons, we learned about printing the documents and TIFF images via the Opticon viewer. After all, the TIFF images are the true documents that you want to be reviewing from and working with. But every once in a while, there will be a need for you to print the text fields that reside within Concordance itself. And in this lesson, we'll briefly look through the printing and reporting options that are available within Concordance. Before we look through those two options, however, I feel I should point out that I personally do not recommend using the printing or reporting features. Instead, I actually send the specific records that I care about directly to Excel and format the reporting there. The reason being, I find Concordance's reporting and printing somewhat simplistic, one that is not really capable of generating a report that would have a wow factor. But it does work as advertised, and for any quick simple printing of field information, it can still be useful. So let's go ahead and look at printing first. We activate the printing function via this print button at the top of the screen. Doing so brings up a series of dialog boxes where we can make some choices about what we want to print. The first tab available allows us to choose what fields to print. Simply click on the desired fields, hit the select button, and it'll move the fields that you want into the selected field boxes. You can also use the move up or down buttons to determine their order on the printed page. The next tab is the KWIC tab, or QUIC, meant for printing the text surrounding keywords. QUIC stands for Keyword in Context. This would be useful if you wanted to print the OCR text of a document, but don't want to print out the entire text field. OCR text of a long Word document could be dozens or even hundreds of pages long. By activating the quick option, only the few lines surrounding the keywords of your search will be printed, which obviously means that this function will only work if you are printing document sets based on a keyword search. Simply check off the box where the keywords apply, then choose how many lines of text above and below your keywords should be printed. You'll end up with just those specific numbers of lines instead of the dozens of pages that the OCR field may contain. The print Q&A pairs is specific to the printing of transcripts, which will print only the questions and answer pairs that surround your keyword hits. The next tab is the formatting of your printing. Here you can decide on header and footer text, and also windows and orphans, which refers to how the documents should be broken up. When there are so many lines of text on a document that it will take more than one page to display, the Windows or Orphans number determines when the document can break off into a new page or when it can simply continue from the half page point. Then we have the other printing options, including field labels, time and date stamps, etc. And we also have compressed printing, which really again is more for transcripts. Here we can have up to nine pages of data printed on a single page. This is popular among transcript printing where you would have four pages shown on a single page. The last tab is your basic print settings. You can choose the record range, save your current print settings for use, open up an existing setting, choose the fonts, change your margins, and even preview the results. And as you can see, this is what our sample print job would look like. Once everything is set, we'll just hit the print button. Now, obviously the printout may not be quite what you're looking for. Instead, we might need these various fields of text placed into a table format similar to that of Excel, which is why there's the report writer function, which is something we'll be looking at now. Let's go ahead with a brief look at the report writer within Concordance. And the reason I say brief is that while report writer can easily generate a table formatted sheet of the various document fields within Concordance, something that might be similar to Excel, in order to really format the report in a presentable form, special coding is required. We'll go ahead and take a look at the simple reports that can easily be created with the report writer. But keep in mind for more elaborate reports, we can always simply send the select fields and records to something like Excel. So to begin, we activate the report writer by clicking on the report button at the top of the screen. You can then choose to open up an existing report or build a new one using the wizard or without the wizard. 
Until you've learned the ins and outs of report writers coding, I'd recommend using the wizard to walk you through the report creation process step by step. So let's click OK. This first screen lets you choose the range of records for your report. Here we'll leave the range alone which will generate a report of all records in this small database. The next screen allows you to add a date, time, or page number to the report, and of course the font button chooses the type of fonts to use for the text. Clicking Next brings us to a screen where we can type in the header and footer. Next are several more options to choose from. Do you want a record per page? A blank line between each record? Horizontal lines and vertical lines? I generally like to have lines between the rows and columns to make the report more easily readable. And then choose whether or not to just print the first line of every field, which is only necessary if you think the entire field of text would be too long for printing. Next we can decide on the various margins that should be used for printing. And again we have the choice of limiting the windows and orphan line numbers, meaning if a single field is about to cut across multiple pages, what is the minimum number of lines that should be at the bottom or top of the page before the entire record should be moved onto the next page? The next screen allows us to select if the report should be an exploded report. An exploded report means that multiple items in one field will be treated as separate records. For example, in an email it's possible to have five different names in the two field in just one single record. An exploded report would treat each one of those five names as a separate record. The five names would be placed into each of its own row, and the rest of the email information, date, time, CC, BCC, body of the email, etc., would be duplicated across all five records. All you have to do to set an exploded report is to select the field that contains multiple items, then choose the delimiter that will be used to separate out the records. In the example I mentioned, the semicolon will likely separate the various names in the to field. The exploded report is seldom used because it can create confusion, and generally you'll want to see one record as a single row, not multiple records. But just be aware that it is available should you choose to use it. In the next screen, we can choose the various fields that we want in the report. Just like in previous lessons, we can double click on any one field and move them to the right, or highlight them and click on the left or right arrows. The next screen lists the fields that have been selected, and if desired, a total and subtotal for the column can be added by checking off these two boxes. These total and subtotal boxes obviously would be reserved for fields such as page numbers. Basically, selecting the page number field, then checking off this total box would give you a page number total at the end of your report. Other options on the screen include the ability to have a new page for each record, suppressing any repetitive entries, and underlying your search hits in the text. Once done, just click on the Next button and then the Finished button. Here you can see the results of the previous option selections. Each field chosen has its own column, and the header and footers have their own rows. And if we bring up the preview screen, we can see the report looks like this, fairly similar to an Excel page. From here we can save this report for use later. Simply click on the Save button and then give the report a name. Now anytime we want to use the same report format for any other database or for any set of records within this database, we can just open up this ARP file again. From this screen, we also have the ability to change the width or height of each column and row. We can also insert more fields by clicking on this Insert button or delete a particular column. As you can see, the report works by simply inputting the name of the fields, and all the fields are shown here in the first drop-down list. Right next to the drop-down list are a list of commands that can be used to make a much more presentable report. Let's take a look at one of these more common commands. Here in this report, we have the beginning Bates number in one column, and the ending Bates number in a separate column. 
We could, using one of these commands here, combine them together. For that, we'll use a command called new line. So, in this column definition here, instead of just beg no for the beginning base number field, I'm going to add in a command plus new line, open and close parenthesis, plus end no. This basically tells Concordance's report writer that I want to first display the field called beg no, then go to the next line, and then show the end no, all in one column. Let's take a look at it now at the preview screen. As you can see, instead of having two separate columns for the Bates numbers, I now have just one column with the beginning and ending Bates right on top of each other. In addition, I can also put in other text information within the same column to distinguish the beginning and ending Bates numbers. I'm going to go ahead and add in the text to in quotes between the new line command and the beginning number. And I'm also going to bold the text Now on the preview screen, you can see the changes. The columns of information now say beg no to end no, giving the information a range format. I can also remove the extra end no column. As you can see, I now have a somewhat more presentable report. There are numerous other commands that can make a fairly full and complicated report with the concordance, but that's more of a lesson for the advanced DVD course. For now, a simple report can be easily generated using the wizard, and what's more, with Concordance's ability to export to Excel, you can just as easily do the same reporting outside of Concordance.